My, the giant takes notice. Such barbarism. What happened here? The Seeker's head twitches upwards as you approach. His eyes open a fraction. He struggles to focus his gaze upon you. A low moan escapes his cracked lips. His eyes close and his head sags forward. You thought you'd already seen the full depths of Magister cruelty. There's nothing to be done. Let's keep moving. A blade through the heart would be a kindness to these lost souls. The merciful thing would be to hasten their journey to the Hall of Echoes. <gasps> An old elf's pained gaze passes between the crucified. He seems on the brink of tears. Dear ones, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. They're as good as my family, but I cannot heal them. I cannot heal them. So much pain. They are changed. That Dallas woman did something to their minds. They won't be moved and they can't be healed. They resisted at all costs. They can't even be healed. Using such magic on them would kill them now. Such beautiful souls, corrupted by such evil. They're called Shriekers. Upon sight, they blast passers-by with source so powerful none can withstand it. Instant death, that is guaranteed. Where you find Shriekers, you can trust the Divine Order is hiding something they desperately want to keep private. Fate of my dear ones proves there must be some such thing on this very island. Stay away from Shriekers if you want to live. I know not how much longer my friends here have. Smoke, blood, and carnage. The Magisters didn't spare a single seeker. I found something. I'm guessing that's one of those shriekers. Whatever it is, it looks dangerous. Can nothing harm this horror? What 
What's this? I found something. My eyes fooling me. <laughs> what is this place? I'm not picking that up. I could try moving it. A tall woman stands amid a field of corpses, some fresh, some ancient. The sour smell of them stings your nostrils, your eyes. As you draw nearer, the stench blooms into a humid flavor you can almost taste. The woman turns to you, bitten lips parting into a grin. 
She tucks a small bunch of black red roses into a leather strap across her left hip and, preparing to curtsy, offers you a hand. What a ball! She stands to her full height, her lips pursed in disappointment. She cocks her head and takes you in. The stench of death and sewage suddenly intensifies. Now, now, that's enough of that. Ave de more de mere galach. Never mind. I mistook you for someone else. I am Radica. And you, you must be here for the same reason as I. She pats the bouquet at her hip. But you're too late. These roses belong to me. Looks like we'll have to find some other way to keep you busy. She bites her lip and leans in, close to your face. As she whispers, her breath, faintly fragrant with a sweet honeyish smell, caresses your ear. You almost forget where you are. I find you rather delicious. Just because something is bad doesn't mean you ought not to do it, love. She presses her lips to yours. Her mouth is soft, her breath sweet. She kisses you gently, then harder, her teeth raking softly across your tongue. Suddenly, her breath sours in your mouth. It is rank, moldering, thick with the taint of death. You try to pull away, but she is holding you tight and hard. You hear a low hum, getting louder. Before you realize what's happening, winged insects pour from her throat down yours. They ricochet around your mouth, a wet, buzzing mass, more by the second. Suddenly, all at once, they start stinging you from inside. She stumbles back a few paces and wipes her mouth. Ha-ha! <laughs> delicious. Mmm, so bloody delicious. Tell me, little man, do you know why the soil here is so very fertile? Do you know why it's the only place in Reaper's Coast where blood roses grow? Now, now. Let's not be unkind, and don't change the subject. It's the corpses, darling. Blood roses only grow in soil rich with corpses. I'll need more roses soon enough. I already started with the last traveler who interrupted me. Come, let's make next year's harvest a real bounty.
doesn't it? You're not trying to escape, are you?
comes with inner source. Aye, the giant takes notice of its charges. You see a glimmer of hope flicker across Slane's eyes as he notices your approach. It's quickly doused with a practice scowl of the oft disappointed. Have you... have you brought it? Or am I to remain a slave? You see a glimmer of hope flicker. Have you? Slain rears back in eagerness, grasping the purging wand with razor sharp claws. Before your eyes, the source from within the wand surges into his draconic form, filling him with a light so bright that you must shield your eyes from the glare. The blazing brightness dies down. Squinting, 
you now see no dragon before you, but the figure of a handsome lizard. A handsome lizard with the same eyes as slain. His eyes still blaze, a piercing silver. A triumphant smile dominates his face as he bows extravagantly before you. Slain. At your service. Neither. Both. I am a dragon knight, the last of my bloodline. Shifting between two shapes is our greatest gift. If everyone thought like you, this vile place would be little more than a sunny island. Perhaps before we are done, we can return it to such a state. Knowing such a steadfast and noble soul offers help to those in need gives me great comfort. And when you are truly at a loss, when you have no choice but to back down or perish, you will find safety in my shadow. This, I promise. This is an island of many mysteries, of many horrors. I'll learn what I can. Perhaps there is some possible reprieve for the souls who suffer here. Slain smiles at you and turns to leave. He takes no more than a few steps before he shimmers out of lizard form, blurring in midair back into a majestic dragon that soars away. The goddess's tears still stream freely, and all is quiet by the tranquil pond. I pray for the goddess's tears still stream freely, and all is quiet by the tranquil pond. As you gaze upon her loving face, you find yourself drawn into a trance-like state. A voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. The voice grows stronger, like a breeze picking up. What were whispers become words. My children, my children. Gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have wrought. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thorns. My child, my child, weep with me for the mother who has lost. Weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. You feel the goddess's presence surround you, feel her nestle you tenderly, like a mother. Mm -hmm. 
The intensity of her embrace deepens. Never since the unremembered days of childhood have you been so enveloped in maternal safety. My child, my child, I love you. My own, my own, I will guard you. Wander where you will and cherish the kiss of Amadia. As suddenly as it came, the voice is gone and you wake from its presence as if from dream-filled slumber. The pond now shines with an inner light, and standing in its waters, you feel rejuvenated, pure, as if born anew. Armadia's grace, blessings upon this day. The goddess's tears still stream freely, but an aura of loving calm now permeates the soft, moist air. We appreciate your hospitality, esteemed Gratiana. By Armadia's grace, what did you do? This is incredible. In all my years, I've never seen the goddess bestow her blessing on someone. I am humbled to be in your presence. Perhaps once, when the seven gods were still strong. But it has been many years since this was anything other than a pond for me to pray at. Armadia's strength waned when the divine Lucian accepted the power of the seven. This is most unusual. Truly, we are blessed to know you. If Armadia favors you, that is all I need to know. Go. I told you, lass, we'll be heading home in no time. This may serve. Blessed you Mother, see? bringer of magic, I pray for you these sources. Give them your protection as they search for the soul jars in your name. This may do some damage. May they have the wisdom to return them here. May they be granted. The goddess's tears still stream freely. The goddess's tears still. It's peaceful here, but I'll I can not be sorry to see the back of these swamps. The goddess's tears still as you wish. Blessed Mother, and have you found them? Did you bring the soul jars? They reside in a vault. Hidden on a beach to the northeast. I wish my direction were more precise. Bracchus had his favorite. This may serve. Divine blessings. It's good. We move, Seekers. Now is the time to resist. The Lady Vengeance will be ours! Others have gone to get us a ship out of here. Hurry on, they'll need you. The others have got. The goddess's tears still.
focus. Was even easier than I thought. Ha! What a fool you are. In what world does treasure simply appear from on high? <laughs> Poor idiot. <laughs> You come to find. You come to search. But you won't find the way. A pity. I cannot help you. I only give the questions. I do. Brachus has willed it. Trompnoi must abide. You have met the unfortunate guardian of this vault. Fate has been unkind to Trompdoy, and so has Brachus Rex. Do you wish to move forward? Listen closely and make your attempt. Brachus is a bloody, rotten, thieving, very, very awful fellow. Some even call him a cur. A cur is... You know nothing. Guess again. Listen closely. Brachus is a bloody, rotten, thieving, very, very awful fellow. Some... You know nothing. You dullard. Slowly, gravely, he shakes his head.
Open your eyes. Time to die. I'm ready. Prepare yourself. I sense something nearby. You won't know what hit you. As you pick up the ring, 
You feel a cold, dark pain shoot up your arm. Your mind itches. You don't hear, but feel a whisper in your ear. It tells you to slip the ring onto your finger. The ring just got tighter. A lot tighter. Something isn't right. The ring's gone, but not its curse. Bloody ring. The ring just got tighter. It's loose. A lot tighter. Get Something off me isn't and right. stay off. The ring's gone, but not its curse. Get off me, and stay off. That's plenty. A soul jar rests between two fallen columns, emanating a faint odor of seaweed and timber. The jar before you may have looked opulent once, but no longer. Now it's covered in grime, its paint chipped away, and its jewels long stolen. The soul jar rocks slightly, light flashing from underneath its lid. On its rim, you can just barely make out the name Gratiana. As soon as you touch the jar's cracked surface, you see a vision of splendor. Silks, fine food, and decadent lechery. But underneath it all lies bone and blood. 
The vision shifts. You see burning villages, slaughtered women and children. You see her, purging wand in hand, standing amongst it all. She throws her head back and laughter echoes in your skull. A shadow falls across her and you see a large, weeping face. She reaches out as if to comfort, but Bracchus drags her back. You see her fall into the mire of the swamp, trapped. As you pull your hand away, you can feel a deep, longing sadness in your soul. Is it regret? or just sadness for a life that used to be. The terrible vision fades. While she lived a selfish life, she seems to have repented. She should be forgiven. Whatever a person may have done in life, they can always be redeemed. The jar sits still. It seems inert. As the power starts to seep into your body, you feel a force pulling away from you, clawing at you, fighting back. For a brief moment, you're looking through someone else's eyes. You see a giant statue's head and a gentle pool. In the vision, you fall to your knees, screaming silently as you feel your soul drain away. The last of the magic seeps out of the jar and rushes inside you. Its power thrums through you, filling your body with source. This jar glitters and glows. From within, you think you can make out the distant sound of laughter. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of the room, joking us all around raw with laughter, all bar the zombies who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens, and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She's flanked by heavily armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word, and the undead lurch towards the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracchus Rex and his whore. Even when she's thrown inside and the door sealed, you can still hear her shouts. You pull your hand away from the jar, your head swimming. You can feel the dwarf's cold terror still twisting in your gut. Something inside you strains. You are replete. You cannot absorb more source. The vision fades. She must have been acting against Bracchus Rex for him to have come for her like that. Keeping the dead as slaves. What a disgusting display. She deserves every punishment she got.